We, I am delighted to welcome Sonia Patel. Um, I don't know whether we've got Sonia visually, but I think we've got her on audio. Um, so Sonia Patel is the um, CIO at um, NHSX. I was about to say the newly formed NHSX, but it's not so new anymore. Um, so um, yeah, we'd love to hear from you, Sonia, and your thoughts in this um, sector, which I know is very close to your heart. Are you there, Sonia? Hi, hello. Hi. We can hear you. Thank you, Sonia. Over to you. It's probably a good thing that you can't see me at this time of the day after an early start. Excellent. So, um, thank you so much for the warm introduction. I was really interested in listening into the earlier conversation around sort of, you know, the sort of kind of almost definitive characteristics you need as a sort of vain women progressing up the career ladder and I kind of resonate with some of those and absolutely uh, agree with them um, the need to be kind and constructive in this space. So I'm really here to um, speak about some um, empowering underrepresented groups and I speak from a voice of some of the early work that we are starting to do particularly in NHSA. I'd probably like to frame this around sort of three, three kind of cohorts that we're looking at in terms of ensuring that um, we are really placing a lot of attention around underrepresented groups, both on the diversity perspective, but also from a sort of broader um, sort of inclusivity agenda uh, viewpoint too. So I'm really, really passionate about ensuring that we get the kind of right leadership ownership around digital and um, up the board in terms of digital leadership, but also um, our own tech talent as well. Um, and ensuring through that kind of pipeline talent that we grow, that we also support and encourage underrepresented groups. So we know, and um, hearing from Aisha earlier just now, um, that we have a particular problem around being women in um, senior roles in tech. Um, and as a kind of response to that, we saw the um, sort of the uprising of the Shuri Network, which is really looking to kind of support uh, constructively women to take those um, steps um, in their career into sort of management and leadership roles. So on the same, in the same way, we recognise there's kind of broader, a broader set of underrepresented groups in this space that we want to be doing work. So that's number one, the leadership and talent pipeline. The second, I think, is really ensuring that in the effort to uh, progress our digital ambitions um, as a part of sort of transforming health and social care that we really cognizant about our workforce in in delivering the right tech and making sure it's meaningful and ensuring that we look at all spectrums of our sort of workforce and user groups so that's really looking at those that are usually underrepresented in terms of their needs around digital technology and data and thirdly our citizens at large as well so recognising as we are more pervasive around digital channels and the use of digital technology to empower our citizens, we don't want to cre create a further wedge uh, in terms of health inequalities for those that may be on the sharp end of potentially digital poverty, um, and sort of those that may not feel com comfortable and confident with using technology in this space and ensuring that we, they're, they're well supported uh, and recognise as a part of sort of the delivery that we take forward. So I'm really going to share some of the reflections and sort of approaches that we're taking just to stimulate conversations, given the kind of key theme, and I'm delighted to keep um, diversity. In terms of ship and talent management, we've got a lot more work to do. We know it's really dark at the, that, the sort of at the leadership end in terms of um, a, a kind of visible uh, diversity is just not quite. And I also think our allies are cognizant that they want to be doing something in this space and make sure we get known diversity, actually diversity of talent around innovation and better delivery, as we've seen in other sectors. You know, there's lots of great um, articles, uh, reviews, and evaluations to say the more diverse teams, the better the productivity and innovation. And just you know, there were statistics that say you know, having more diverse teams a year, about 30% has been profit margin. And in health and social care, we don't have profit, but if you just imagine 
measured that as increased activity and what that might mean in terms of change. In terms of our work, um, I think we're taking a real approach to really make sure that when we are taking forward to support um, systems and organisations and the use of technology, that we're really spending a lot of time on research. Um, and I think that the principal standout for NHSX, um, which is sort of a way EDS has done the government services, is spending more time, more in time, understanding our users, understanding our diversity to make sure the products and services are then, that are then offered onwards are meaningful and helpful. And for users, it's very important. And that lends itself also to the citizen space. So we're doing some really good work um, now within NHS around creating a people network, uh, working much more closely with national voices who we've heard, particularly through COVID, share with us um, some difficult and some tragic um, in these difficult times around the digital technology but also some really remarkable work that's happened by communities and supporting sort of peers, neighbours um, around using of digital technology. So we need to look at, you know, look at how we look at our citizen offerings in totality. Um, and so that comes back to with making sure we're partnering uh, uh, with the right people networks and the right groups to really understand the impact and the benefit of digital technology. So those are just reflections around some early work that we're doing. But I think the overarching principles from this is making sure that we start with our numbers and it's really important. Um, so I'm not one for quotas and I have shared this before, but I do think it's important that we have data so we understand uh, where some of our diversity, uh, um, diversity and equality issues might lie. And um, so in any project that's been taken forward by local areas, any initiative, any large scale programs, it's really important to start with the data. And as colleagues may have seen, um, particularly in the um, NHS E and I phase three letter, there was particular emphasis put on ensuring that we are collecting um, ethnicity data level, an acceptable level to be able to help with our planning and service provision. And I'm really grateful that that has gone in because that also then supports further work that we might want to do in other areas to ensure that we are always looking at different lenses when we are looking at our patient population and workforce information. Um, so the data is important and we need that to help drive our thinking uh, and our decision making. I think the power of conversations is the second. I think it's really important that we uh, reach out and speak to uh, communities um, that may be in those underrepresented groups on the sharp end of um, sort of um, the spectrum in terms of use of digital technology or certain protected characteristics and so on. So that comes through in terms of our ambitions, um, informing uh, sort of views the research, be it in building leadership talent all the way to the citizen offer. Um, is really important. And thirdly, I, I would just encourage all that are listening in today to be a part of the change. So I think the ownership isn't in, in BAME colleagues taking this forward constructively, in the allies doing more. I think we're all a part of ensuring that we're a part of this change. And small things, I think, that could make big differences is ensuring um, that we can panel but when they're constantly you know the diversity in the panel that they're likely to be in, materials that they're producing to share out with their communities, does it reflect and is it represented to their community? So these are small, small things, but actually could add up to the bigger impact. So on that point, I'm really delighted I'm kind of listening in today, but also sharing and contributing to the conversation. And I'd probably like to pause at that point and take any questions that colleagues might have. Thank you. Um, thanks so much, Sonia. That was um, that was really insightful. Um, I'm just going to um, check our. 
Okay, so um, how uh, do you define digital poverty? We have a question in um, from um, from Shilpa Sheena. How would you? Um, so it's a it's a new term that um, has arisen. Um, so um, you know, fairly starkly, it's about uh, families, individuals that do not have enough. Um, funds to be able to buy hardware or upkeep them buy data and, and that's the sharp pen so we you know there were there was new families you know, young children but only having maybe one own device between themselves um, and it's those sorts of um, arrangements where we think actually digital poverty and it's not by design it's just recognition in those situations that actually providing digital services for everyone um, especially when everyone is uh, exposed to just one one sort of piece of equipment to do it might not be ideal and in some cases the upkeep of that technology and actually buying a data plan is just not affordable. So that is where that is what we're considering as digital poverty. Um, and you know, that's my kind of definition of it. But I think over time will be more clearer. But I think that's a more that's a newer term that seems to have come about particularly starkly during COVID. Yeah. Um, OK, thank you. And another quick question from Yemi. Um, is there an opportunity to build diversity in digital health for clinical research practitioners? Do you have a view on that term, Sonia? Absolutely. So when we're talking about diversity, I think this needs to, um, this, this, this expands across all boundaries. So we're not just, from my perspective, it's not just um, uh, fixated in sort of the tech world of leadership and workforce and, and citizens. I mean, I'm looking at it from that lens just because that's the current portfolio I'm focusing on. But I think my takeaway is for the, for the contributors to the conversation today is I think there is there is space and it's probably the right time to start opening those conversations, looking at the data, challenging the norms constructively to try and make the difference. Um, but the earlier conversation also, there's a bit about role modelling. So I know I sit here with the privilege of a kind of senior uh, Bain leader and my privilege is to ensure that I can open doors, I can create the right role model and I can support others in this space um, to take the leap of faith um, in, in making inroads in the terms of work they do or the sort of you know, management or leadership um, roles that they might want to take up. So I think I think nothing is not achievable. And I think there are no boundaries that restrict us in terms of the areas. But it comes back to my last sentiment was be a part of the change. If you feel that you can contribute to a specific workforce group that um, is in need of rethinking its makeup, then find ways to start having that conversation, creating safe spaces uh, to break down those barriers that currently exist. Great. Thank you so much, um, Sonia, and, um, and we're going to have to leave it there, I'm afraid, um, to, to welcome our next uh, speaker. But I really appreciate you, uh, you, you making the time for us. I think there'll probably be um, other feedback, which we will be delighted to share with you um, after the end of the session tomorrow. So, uh, so thanks again, Sonia.